come to rolling action. Good morning, Your Majesty. Please, who are the Tukum people? You are uh, welcome. Uh, the term Jukum is a generic name for all the descendants of Wararafa and uh, What is the tradition of origin of the Jakun, of the Kun people? The story of the origin. Chukun people migrated from Arabian Peninsula, the Middle East, specifically from Yemen, first settled in Egypt. From Egypt came down to Nigeria, first settled in Gazagamu, from Gazagamu, came and established a very strong empire known as Pararaba Empire. River. From there, after the disintegration of Kararafa, Jukun now spread across all over Nigeria and beyond the shore of Nigeria. Today, the new capital city of Jukun is Bukhari, where we are today. Are the Jukun one of the oldest ethnic groups in the world? There is no doubt that Jukun is one of the oldest ethnic groups even from the story of our migration the present places is a known fact to ascertain that it's one of the oldest ethnic groups in the world. Please, what is the meaning of Kwararafa? Literally, the Kwararafa is a term given to Jiko people by the Hausa people, particularly the Maguzawa and Wangarawa of the Hausa city states. And, uh, this was when the Jiko carried out the military expedition to the Hausa states on inquiry. Who are you, the Jukun? What happened? They say these people have Kwararo, the compound word of Kwararo. That means these people are after us, meaning Kwararafa. Please, what is the Jukun cultural relationship with Yoruba, Igala, Idoma? There is actually a cultural relationship between these ethnic groups, the Jukus. 
This mark here is the Igala Idoma Nope Oda. They are the stock, the collection of ethnic groups that form the Paranafa. We migrated to Jeda from Yemen and established Paranafa Empire in Jeda. After which, after the collapse of the empire, these people found their way to their present places of Abu. But that of Yoruba, the Yoruba, after we migrated, another stream that followed the Jukun were Yoruba in search of their brothers, the Jukun. While they were searching for Jukun, they couldn't trace them, decided to settle where they are today. And the meaning of Yoruba is we are we have such enough, let's settle. That's the literal meaning of Yoruba and Juku. So actually, the relationship between the Juku and the Yoruba. In Gaziana, what is the relevance? Are there, is there still a contact? Is there still some Juku contacts in Gaziana? The relevance of uh, Gazar Damu, the Bajukun history, cannot be overemphasized. However, let me state it categorically that when Jikun came into Nigeria, Gazakamu was the first place of their settlement. They first settled in Gazakamu together with the Kanuri. And that was a parting point between the Jikun and Kanuri. They left their Kanuri brother there, proceeded establish Kwarara Empire. And uh, because of the historical importance of uh, the Jukun and the Kanori people, there used to be an exchange of a lot of items. But it had got to a point whereby the Kanori and the Jukun exchange ambassadors. We have to up to date what is called Zanua from the Kanuri representing the Kanuri community in Jukola and we send them Jifi Anyi who went there to represent the Jukun communities in Kanuri land. What is the relationship between Jukun and the houses that came to settle in Mukari. The relationship between the houses and uh, Jukun started from the Kwarara he is. While in Kwarara the Jukun carried out military expedition to the Hausa city state. During those expeditions, Jukun came with the war booties, which includes the Hausa people. Also, there was a trans. Uh, Sahara trade, whereby the people came all the way from Libya in Tripoli trading with Kwarara and the article of trade were 
cutting weaving materials, salt, and timonies. And uh, the house are. While these people keep on coming to Okari, two prominent Hausa people came at the later time, known as Sambo and Dikos. They are great Malans. When they came, pleading with Aku to be their magicians or Dibias. So the Aku then tried them by giving them a black cow to perform whatever magic they could. So they slaughtered the cow, but he didn't find them worthy of being a great, great malam. So at that time, they collected the bones, put it on the cow skin, and resuscitated the cow. So this relation, the Jukun also integrated them into the mainstream of the Jukun polity and uh, they have freedom they have freedom to do things like the Jukun do. That's our relationship that we are enjoying up to date. One thing um the Bazugawas or Mazugawas, the houses that did not accept Islam yes. are said to have come here. These are the how when we talk of houses we are referring to the Maguzawas and the Wangarawas, not Fulanis. Mm. So we are talking about the ancient houses, not society, choose king and things like that. Beautiful. True, the Jikun have oracle and they perform different functions. We have what is called the Yakucheji, which is responsible for information. We have Noko and uh, we have Chunyane, which is for justice, like the Shango in uh, the Yoruba land. We have Ajon for revolution, we have Aqua, Abi, Ashita to rise into two, like the Yakukeji, the Chunyande, the, the Aqua, Abi, Jema, Abadu, uh, Banoza, they are for people. All the diviners, all the people who operate this oracle, the Jukun, we call them Avu. You know, somebody like me now, I'll follow you. Anybody that you see the sun and go far is for oracle. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, in Jukun, do you have one family, or at least that is where the family is? And how long does it take? To train to be a diviner. I know in your is 12 years, in Benin 12 years, how long does it take? Do you have an idea? If you don't, you can move on. In Juku system is different from in Jukun system, anybody can become a fool. While the existing album is performing his divine activities, he will be having an assistant, not one or two. It is hierarchical. Or he will be training the rest. After he passed away, the next person will take over. Or anyone that performs that is more active can take over from our and they are not for a definite family.
anybody from the community that is being chosen by God. That is, there is no single family that is responsible for becoming a woman, being a trainer of all. But that of the family, of the family in is within the family. You know, we have universal and uh, family oracle. That of the family is. Somebody from outside the family cannot become or a specific family. So it is that one that is within the family that could be chosen. But the universal or a could be anybody chosen by God within that community. How do you administer justice? Uh, and before you answer that question, normally they use masquerade. In, like in the uh, Ekwe, Ekwe society, do you do, do have masculinity? And how do you administer justice? <laughs> Actually, in Jukun society, there are mass breeds. But those mass breeds were for entertainment. In Jukun society, administration of justice is done in three ways. Either through oath taking, or trial by ordeal, or through arbitration. So both criminal and civil cases have been administered in these three ways. If, let's say, there is a criminal issue, if a person or the accused person denies that he was not involved in the crime, he will be asked to take an oath. Either the oath of Chunyane, which is the oath of lightning and thunder. If you happen to be the culprit, thunder will strike. And now we have what is called a uh, trial by ordeal. Uh, I mean, Jukun is called Ambo. That is, uh, to prove you are innocent, they have different categories of Ambo or trial by ordeal. There is this specific one that we use a very clean water with uh, these uh, berries, black and red striped berries. We put it in. If, to prove your innocence, you use it to wash your eyes. If you are a culprit, immediately you will see your eyes will turn red and uh, tears will be rolling out your cheeks. That is to prove that you are the one. And uh, you have arbitration. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are a lot of them. Then we have arbitration whereby an issue within the family will be treated by the family head. If uh, it's not satisfied, they can take it to political leaders, the traditional leaders, whereby they can treat the matter up to our to determine who is guilty. So these are the three ways we use to administer justice. But as of the masquerade is for entertainment. Please, one more thing. Is, is there a council for the justice, or is it the same council uh, for, the, for his majesty? Do you have a separate council that deals with justice? 
or is it the same council? <coughs> so his ma his majesty is telling you that So it is the same council of his majesty and his sacred class. That is why you see that logo. What you are seeing there is a sort of justice. It's a symbol of authority of Aku. Then a person commits serious crime and he is found against the land. He is found guilty. There is a huntsman called Kawa in charge of execution. So he is an executioner. So when this council found you guilty, very serious crime that what execution they can pass a death sentence of you and use that sword through cover to slaughter the offender. What are the economic activities of Jukun? The major occupation of Ajukon is agriculture, specifically farming and uh, animal husbandry. In a season like this, it is only in the dry season that you can look at it as a resting period. But throughout the wet season, they are involved in farming activities. They cultivate a lot of crops. We, the Juku, also raise animals in our houses. Hunting is another occupation of the Juku people. Also fishing. They are also involved in other craft like wood carving woofing of clothes, production of salt, they are all Jukun occupation right from ancient time. And uh, the items of trade between the Jukun and uh, the, 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 the traders, Arab traders, where the woofing cutting material and salt are the major article of trade. Uh, can you briefly describe the social political organization, the different levels of government? Of, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the Juku political organization is that one that is based on theocracy. That is, it is a state governed by the gods, represented by the Apu. Apu is serving as a representative of the gods. Under Apu, we have 
abonjo chat with certain responsibilities. Abonziki assisted him. We have Kendacho and Kendaziki. Each one has its own function. With other Kendas under the Kendacho. So also, in as much as the male have their own leadership role and functions, women are not left out. That is, we have Motsi. Motsi is a very strong personage in the Jukong political system. She is in charge of all women in the entire Jukong kingdom. She normally settles any family problem between Aku and his wife. She has her royal court and she is very powerful, also like Aku. We also have Mukaku. Mukaku is the most senior princess. She, her responsibility mostly is to settle dispute among the prince and princess. We also have uh, more, uh, Wakuku. Wakuku is always choosing from the wives of the previous Ako, who has reached her manipulse. So when a uh, who well, is choosing from the wives of the past Ako to take control of the present Ako's wives. And she is like, she is the queen, the mother queen that looks after all uh, the present Ako wives. And we have some other offices for women also in the Jukong political setup. Thank you. Now, how did Kwarafa people retain their culture and protect themselves from Bono and, uh, and the Aousa attacks? How did the Jukun, uh, how did Kwarafa check the threats from the Bono and Hausa states. said the Juku carry out military expedition campaigns to Hausa states. But between the Juku and the people of Borno, like I said, we are brothers. We exchange ambassadors to that's to establish a relationship that there should be no attack on each other. So that of uh, the Hausa state, like I said, we went there to emancipate them based on what they are doing, like slave, selling of, uh, engaging in slave trading. So therefore, the military expedition will carry it on to them, make them not to regroup and attack the Quran of our state. What is the effect of uh, colonization, uh, in, uh, British colonization on our culture?
Actually, our contact with the colonialist is the source of our problem in this country. When they came, we have already have our organized culture. We are on our, our civilization. When they came, they prefer the Hausa states. <coughs> The full of these states over us. So they deal mostly with the house of states and also their policies also create a lot of problems for us, divided our people. <laughs> Take for ex example, when they came, <coughs> they restructure <coughs> our kingdom, which we are placed under certain regions, divisions, uh, administrative provinces. Like for example, the Kiana, Abise, Ashuku, which were under the Akuka here, that they ruled them from here, were balkanized and being exercised and placed in other regions make them independent. And uh, they cut them off from our people here. So that division alone has, has an effect up to present days. And those division is still, that effect is still on because with even the creation of states, we will discover that our brothers that we are being created and placed in other states cut off their link with us, thereby creating divisions among the future generation, the present generation and future generation, who have no idea about our linkages, our link. So we have brothers all over the 27 states of Nigeria, but today they hardly know their roots which is a serious setback to our development process. Thank you. Which leads me to another question. The white man, the French, English, yeah. they are all one. One culture. Islam, all the way down to Medina, one. Isn't it time that our own original king, Akuka Oni, bring us together so we can fight. So not fight, but balance. If, because if Japan has to fight a whole complex of white people, whole complex of Islam, on its own, without the whole complex of original Africans that extend from here to South Africa. So we are asking His Majesty that is it is time that original African kings come together. Just as I highlighted, because our problem 
is the division policy that was set up. And the only method for us now to adopt is to have unity of purpose. There is no way we can forge ahead without unity. So, unity of purpose is very, very paramount. It should be taken as a project. Let us enlighten our people that as far as we remain divided, we cannot forge ahead in all spheres. But if we today decided to unite, to become one, to shun away nepotism, to shun away sectionalism, to shun away tribalism, and chart a common cause of one person in humanity. In fact, we will go to infinity. So, just like you are asking, the only suggestion, the only way for, for black Africa is unity of purpose. Let us not discriminate against each other. Let us come together as Africa so that we chart a common cause, so that we place our development strategy as part of so already, a lot of interest has taken place in our daily dealings. Taking a cursory look at Africa and our culture, we have a lot of similarities in a lot of things we are doing in our culture. But what we are having today are foreign, are aliens to us. There are a lot of interests, <coughs> political interests, religious interest, and a lot has already divided us so sharp that it's not going to be an easy task. But the traditional ruler should be the rallying point of our unity. Let the heads of various chiefdoms and kingdoms strive hard to implant one common thing among in our people. We should try to shun religions in our dealings. We try to shun politics in our dealings. Let all these traditional rulers try to be neutral. They shouldn't belong to one religious group. They should be neutral. As long as the traditional ruler, who are now the hope of masses, should not be seen belonging to one religious group or one political group, by doing so, it will attract all his subjects together. By the time he, they bring all their subjects together, then the traditional rulers from different kingdoms now will meet and have a common cause a strategy for the people with this we can achieve 
whatever we set up for ourselves. Just a few. Uh, Ashe Foundation is like the new parapha of bringing the traditional rulers together. Now, um, I hope His Majesty is aware that we are involved in public awareness. Uh, we have to educate. Uh, people have gone too long, 56 years, and we have to re educate. Yeah, that's what we're doing this. To educate people to understand who they are. So I just want His Majesty to, because you know that the video is to the people. So for them to understand, I mean, that that's public awareness. Because that's all we're doing here. You know, to so I would So um his majesty said for Ashes Foundation, he as a royal father and a representative of God is just to ask for the blessings of God to be upon you. Because we are talking about awareness. You should equally know that those that have special interest in our communities, they are not completely dormant. They are also watching us. Maybe you are move. I just move now to enlighten people. They might go a step ahead of you. So, so it is not surprising. Maybe you are present here. You have the information already. So we are wishing you well. We are asking for the blessing of the God to be upon you. With the blessing of God, you can go up and up, higher and higher. So, Ashe Foundation, what you are doing is a wonderful job. We will continue to encourage you morally so that you excel. This is what we are looking for to enlighten our people to be one to enlighten our people, to note that we are all from the same one human race. We should promote black culture. We should promote black people all over the world. So it is not an easy task, but this is only an aspect that will promote the black culture all over the world. So we, I am, giving you my blessing to continue in this noble task. Thank you. Good. So we're going to go to where 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 we're we going to go. go. Yeah. Already yeah. has the yeah. protocol. Yeah. Majesty yeah. has given his approval. Yeah. So we are here we will finish the project today. Whatever you need. Yeah. It's a uh, things that we could I, I forgot to ask about the copper that <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. The microphone, you took it off. So, can you wear it back so we can have that? Okay, okay. 
Come to rolling action. Yes, the crocodile is important in the whole of the Middle West. From here, and Kaduno means crocodile. From all the Kwarafa people have, I mean, have crocodile. In Yoruba land, after the leopard, it's crocodile. We call it Oluweri. It is the one that brings the rain. So, can you tell us? the culture or the background of crocodiles in the middle world because it's it's our it's your totem. Crocodile, specifically, the ones we are keeping here, they plays very important role. They are a protector of the land. During our migration period, this is what our forefathers used as canoe. They used crocodile. They rode on the crocodile back to cross rivers and oceans. So they remain important in Chikon religion and history. So that is the importance of crocodile, specifically to Chikon people. Thank you. I've also heard that, that in, 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 I mean, Cardinal too, there are towns that if you want to enter, you have to walk on the back of a body at the end of that town. I've heard that before, but so my name can be I mean, I'm not familiar with this. Now we know some other places that have a historical links with the Jukun, like in Bu, in Borono State. They also have these similar points in other places, uh, keeping the crocodile. Is there anything about leopard in uh, Jukun? Uh, Thank you. That's all. Yes, I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going to go to the hosp
the traditional. I want to bring a camera to the front and then, please.